The next speaker is a man from Missouri with a story to tell, Jeff Mazansky. It's a tough crowd to follow, isn't it? It's wonderful to see everybody in here. I'm pretty well new to the game, as you all know. They haven't let me come around things like this. Um, last September, I finally got out of prison after 22 years. Hey, closer. It's because of people like you. Because everybody, not only in this country, but around the world, that signed petitions, that sent letters in, that spoke up. You know the thing that uh, our forefathers had when we started this country? Together we stand, divided we fall. Well, it's true. And I can see this family here together. And I call you family, because that's what you are. You're the spearhead of what this whole world needs. And that's working together, getting the job done. Because the governments aren't, aren't going to do it by themselves. I come to this convention not knowing what to expect. I was really surprised to see what this whole industry has grown to in the last 20 years. It's amazing. I know for a lot of you, you've seen it through the years. So it seems like it's growing slow, growing slow. But to me, it's like, wow. So I remember having to go hide behind doors to go roll one up. Uh, you know. <laughs> Not no more. <laughs> that's, that's because, <laughs> yeah, I need to, because I'm still on parole. <laughs> And I haven't had a chance to indulge yet as much as I would like to if I can't. But I really have a lot of joy watching the people that do. <laughs> so it's you all, each and every one of you that come to these conventions, that learn things, that are able to take it home and to different places and tell other people about it, to spread the word, to let people know that cannabis is not the drug that they claimed it was. It's medicine. It can help so many around the world. Our veterans are needing it. Our children are needing it. And we ourselves are needing it. And uh, if we remember that, and I'll keep the fight one way, and I'm sure we all gonna have a few differences here and there. But the main focus is getting it legal so nobody else has to go to jail. Once we do that, or as, as while we're doing that, what we need to do is start fighting more for these guys that are in prisons. Yeah. They go through a lot of suffering. I was locked up in 1994. I learned a lot while I was in there. I learned how the guys got put away from their families, how they weren't able to watch their kids grow up, how some of their grandkids grew up, got married, and they didn't get to see none of it. They weren't involved. And by that, we ended up with families that were in there. I'd seen guys have their sons come in there, ended up in the same cells with them. And the reason why is because they weren't there to help them, to mentor them. Because it's tough trying to be a father from the inside. I was lucky. My children were a little bit older when I got locked up. But I still spent one third of my life in prison. And I pray nobody else has to. So, with people like you, we can stop it all. Uh, you're marvelous. I've learned so much. And I'm going to be right alongside of you fighting. 
Any place I can go, anything I can do, I'm going to be there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeffrey. You know, what he left unsaid was that he got sentenced to life imprisonment for selling weed, for performing effectively a community service. <laughs> and he got clemency just a few months ago because of advocacy by people who cared about his becoming a free man. <laughs> 